Hello viewers, I welcome you all from HLT of Tech channel and today we will talk about the uh, server roles that are available in uh, SharePoint 2022 server subscription edition. Uh, Microsoft has recently uh, is our facil uh, has facilitated us with specifying different role while configuring any server. Uh, for example, you can configure different types of roles when you are going to configure SharePoint uh, environment uh, this is the configuration wizard if I talk about the dedicated roles there are four types of dedicated roles the front uh, the first one is front-end server okay the front-end server is a dedicated role of SharePoint that is used in large organizations where there are uh, many users or there are thousands of users or you can say even a million of users are there uh, so what you do uh, you separate uh, a server or you uh, physically separate a server of SharePoint in uh, overall farm which is responsible for handling the user requests okay uh, for example if we create a server that is responsible for uh, performing the jobs of SharePoint uh, application for example timer jobs backups and uh, services that is uh, search service metadata service user profile service and it also uh, facilitates the front-end request then you know the load on the server will increase as a result the SharePoint server will give uh, a very uh, slow response for that purpose what we do we uh, physically separate the role of front-end Microsoft also described that this is a server that is used for serving the user request okay there may be multiple front-end servers uh, at extreme case there may be two or me, uh, three servers or if you have separate sites for example you have a primary site you have a fault tolerance site and you have a disaster recovery site what you do uh, you specify two front end or three front end servers depending upon your load uh, in each site okay i have already uh, described these things in my previous videos in my channel <coughs> for your ease I will uh, also specify the link in the description of uh, how you can specify or how you can count how many front-end servers or application servers you need so the second dedicated role is application server whenever you create first server it must be a application server okay without application server you can't make make a front-end server so uh, application server is basically responsible for backend request it it does not uh, entertain the request of the users rather it only serves the re uh, requests uh, that are responsible for SharePoint normal operations as well as functioning such as search crawl requests if you have a very large amount of data in your SharePoint sites then your search crawlers will need extensive CPU resources and memory for crawling uh, efficiently among all the uh, documents that are there in your site. So what you do, you specify a separate application server and you dedicate uh, search requests or similar SharePoint requests such as user data a user profile service such as metadata service such as manage metadata and uh, search services etc so these servers are optimized for high throughput and uh, they are responsible for only backend requests the uh, third one is distributed cache server okay distributed cache service is a very important service of uh, sharepoint which uh, helps you in optim uh, optimization of uh, performance and uh, it uh, decreases loads or why, uh, when you are loading various pages when your users are loading various pages or browsing the data 
the distributed cache service cache all the data that is necessary for uh, quick for uh, frequent use uh, it cache that service and uh, it as a result it give you a better performance it also get the authentication and uh, authorization tokens and all of these are uh, save in the distributed cache server if you have a very large organization it is always recommended that you uh, specify a separate server for distributed cache server uh, similarly you may have multiple servers of distributed cache distributed cache uh, is runs on uh, a port that is uh, triple two uh, sorry double two triple three or i think triple two double three i'm not sure about it uh, but it's one of them so it works on this port and there is a distributed cache cluster that is used for uh, making a cluster of all the cache servers that are available if you are working on a small environment then you can uh, you can uh, uh, specify uh, the shared roles in the server that is front end with distributed cache uh, here that is uh, that will serve the purpose of front end as well as the distributed cache but if you have a very large amount of documents you uh, and many concurrent users are there then it is always recommended to uh, specify a uh, to dedicate a separate distributed cache server okay search server is a type of application server it's a type of application server but it is dedicatedly uh, operating or managing the search service okay and its components so this is uh, you can say that it is application server but uh, in uh, organizations from uh, medium level to large level uh, size data size uh, you can also specify the shared role that is application with search uh, that will uh, in this type of uh, installation your server will equally uh, perform the roles of uh, backend queries as well as the search service but if you have a very large organization with millions of documents then it is always recommended that you dedicate a separate search server okay so uh, shared roles i have explained you if you are working on medium type of organization with medium data size then you can uh, have a front end server with distributed cache you can uh, have application server with such service as well if a single uh, special servers uh, special roles are uh, two types of role that is one is single server farm uh, the single server farm is meant for performing all the jobs of uh, <coughs> front end application distributed cache and search all of these dedicated roles including any other roles required are configured in only one server so it is already uh, understood by this definition that this server is not recommended for uh, production environments where there is a lot of data uh, this type of server is not recommended it can only be used for testing or developing uh, development purpose or if you have very limited tasks for example you have a very small office that deals only in uh, less than thousand documents or so then you can uh, make a single server form <coughs> or preferably it is only uh, recommended in uh, limited production task or development environment okay the next one is custom if uh, there is a custom then uh, you can specify a custom role here okay if I click next it will tell that uh, what type of authentication uh, is required so uh, here you can see that there are two types of authentications uh, while configuring the SharePoint production configuration visit uh, the first one is NTLM and the second one is negotiate <coughs> okay NTLM is recommended for those environments in which you want only password user id and password based authentication for access to your sites and site collections but if you want that your server uh, must be uh, limited its access and authorization must be limited to your domain users only okay i'm repeating this thing that if you want 
that your use that your documents and your site collections of your site of your SharePoint site must be accessible to domain users only. Then you uh, preferably recommended to uh, use the negotiate that is Kerberos Map. For this, uh, what it does, it uh, share the token with your Active Directory, and based on that token, it perform all the uh, access and authorization of the users. So it depends upon your environment whether you use NTLM or Negotiate and these were the server roles that were important from uh, I think 20, SharePoint 2019 onwards Microsoft are uh, giving you this facility that you can select the uh, server role here. Uh, before that I think in SharePoint 2013 I worked and before that uh, this option was not available okay you have to manually configure the roles after the installation of which type of server do you want so uh, this was all about the server roles that are uh, necessary to understand while configuring your SharePoint server farm that uh, and it all depends upon your data size and uh, the uh, number of users that will uh, simultaneously access those sites. So I have uh, regarding these architecture and demonstration videos, I have already uh, uploaded links of the, in the description. You can navigate to uh, these links to get the better understanding of what are the front end servers and what are what is the actual architecture of SharePoint. So uh, viewers, I thank you all for watching this video and uh, subscribe my channel to continue enjoying more videos.